This one's gonna be a story time video. I have a story to tell. Maybe, if we're really lucky, I'll get around to making some kind of point at the end. I just started my new fourth edition campaign. It is the continuation of a series of campaigns. Uh, this is now the fourth in a direct series of continuations of a story that's been going on for 12, 13, 14 years, something like that. Um, you may recall, I have an early video on this channel about um, persistent worlds and how it uh, it enhances player investment in the story of your campaign. I'm doing that. That is the campaign that that video is based on. <clears throat> so, uh, we're just getting started. Had one session so far. A little introductory campaign. Uh, the, the players haven't played 4th edition either in a very long time or at all. I actually have a new player in the campaign who's never played before. Um, so, we're doing the first, the first encounter. The first scenario. It's... And I wanted to introduce minions, so you got, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, a standard encounter in 4th edition is a number of regular enemies equal to the number of players of the same level. So, uh, a standard monster level 1, one of those for each player character. Or, you can split them up into about four minions, or combine two of them into an elite, or combine four of them into a solo. Um, so I thought, let's keep it simple. First encounter, we'll have, uh, for a party of five, we'll have three regular enemies and eight minions. So take the five regular enemies and split two of them into four minions each. Uh, they see the minions and they see one of the regular enemies. The, the other two are like down in a well. They don't see them right away. Um... And uh, uh, so they, they, they rush in to kind of like create a sort of defensive line. Uh, the minions rush in. They're, they're, they're doing, doing some blows. The minions are going down real fast. Um, doing some damage. There's, there's you know, damage exchange. It's, do, it's going well. Um, and then uh, the monk is... Oh, did I mention the party has a monk? The star of the show. So the monk is really thrilled with this minion situation because if you don't know a fourth edition monk specializes in multi-attacks they love having more than one target to uh to face off against so the monk moves in like you know, she always is trying to get into that spot where she can hit two minions at once or two any two targets at once so she takes out two minions on one turn next turn uh, she gets surrounded by uh, two more minions. They get into a flanking position. They're nyah, 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 getting at her. Um, these are sort of like shadowy goblin kind of creatures. So think goblins, basically. Um, and so on on her next turn, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to use five storms, an at-will ability. It attacks everyone adjacent to her. Neat. Standard monk at-will ability. I knew she had this. So... Attack one, miss. Mm. Attack the other one, hit. Use Flurry of Blows, which is a free action at will ability once per round. It does automatic damage to somebody. does not have to be the one that you hit with the triggering attack. Do that to kill the one that she missed. Then use her move action to uh, uh, do it like a wall run along a stack of piled up wood to get adjacent to another enemy, one that had just come out of the well. Just came out fresh, brand new, not missing any hit points. And she's like, action point. Anyone can do an action point in 4th edition. So take an extra action. And she uses an ability, and a, a once per encounter ability, called Open the Gate of Battle. Um, it does 2d10 plus dex mod damage, plus an additional d10 if the target is not missing any hit points. Neat. Ideal target natural 20. In 4th edition, a crit just maxes out your damage. You automatically do maximum damage. So, 2d10 plus 1d10 is 3d10. Maximized is 30 plus dex modifier, 33 damage altogether. This is a level 1 character doing 33 damage with an encounter power. This is not even a daily. 
comes in, just annihilates this guy. He had 32 hit points maximum. So she did more than his maximum damage in one, or his maximum hit points in one hit. And then that's the end of her turn. Uh, and I thought, damn, monks are good. Monks are so good. And it got me to thinking. Compare the 4th edition monk and what it's capable of. What it standard, but it just like baseline does. I was like, this isn't even her leveraging her entire kit. This is an at-will power, an action point, which anyone can do, and an encounter power that is reasonably situational. It just happened to be the right situation. And, a, and one lucky roll. Uh, she even missed an enemy and killed it anyways. So... It got me to thinking about the 4th edition monk versus the 5th edition monk. Now, you probably know that I do a lot of comparisons of 5th edition to 4th edition on this channel. And a lot of it tends to be sort of high-level, conceptual, philosophical differences. Sometimes I get into specific mechanics. I just want to give this as a visceral, anecdotal example of this is what a monk should be. This is what a monk should be able to do. Like, I'm not saying you need to have these specific abilities, but I'm saying, like, the game is clearly designed to allow the monk to excel in battle. Um, few, I'm not saying no other character classes could do this, but few other character classes could do this quite like that. Um, the party also has a ranger in it. I think in an ideal circumstance, he might be able to do the same thing. I don't think he would be able to one-shot an enemy with a, an encounter power. He might have to burn a daily if he wanted to do that. But, all of that aside, just the, the ability to really, like, operate in this situation in a way that the 5th edition monk never could against any level appropriate encounters um because the fifth edition monk especially at first level because this again first level character this is the very first encounter of the entire campaign it has really set a uh a tonal standard that will be difficult to follow up on um but uh, uh, imagine a first level fifth edition monk who has eight or nine hit points uh it has maybe a fifth AC generously um and you know uh, uh enemies are swinging like you know d6 maybe plus one damage uh heaven forbid you should face a bugbear uh bugbears will murder first level characters just outright you know you go into battle you can take maybe one two hits generously before you go down you probably go down on that second hit uh, whereas the monk, and, and, and what are you doing? What are you doing offensively? You're doing, like, I'm going to basic attack. I'm going to basic attack. I'm going to do a basic attack. Like, I think, what, do you get, do you get martial, you do get martial arts at level one. You have to. Surely, you have to. You, uh, so you're making two basic attacks a turn. If you miss, nothing happens. Um, because that is, that, that second attack is your flurry of blows. It's... It's just an interesting thing to look at, the comparison. It's like a, a 4th edition monk's Flurry of Blows is a free action. It triggers when you hit any enemy with an attack, and it does automatic damage. It's not an attack roll. You don't roll the attack, you don't roll damage. It just has a set amount of damage. It's based on your uh, your dexterity modifier. So it's, it, I think in, in her case, it's like 3 plus dexterity mod. I think. I could be wrong about that. Um... And it it has an additional benefit if you use it on someone other than the person that you hit with the triggering attack. Um, so it, it encourages multi-target offensiveness. And this is in a game where a significant number of the enemies that you face have one hit point. At all levels of play, one hit point. So incidental damage like this, which first off, the, the monks, the flurry of blows damage is not really incidental it's it's like a solid five or six points of damage at level one and it goes up from there um uh but even so like even if it was one point of damage that's still useful in a game that has minions fifth edition does not have minions uh flurry of blows could easily not kill a goblin even if you hit you know goblins will have like what five hit points 
goblins and kobolds, your standard lowest level enemies have about five hit points. It's very conceivable that D4 plus, like what, two or three doesn't kill that. Um, and so it, it, it just really struck me the, uh, the the kinds of tonal differences between 4th edition and 5th edition. And it got me to wondering, like, what do people see in monks? Like, I think, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think people see the 4th edition monk when they think about the monk in general. Like, in any game. Any game that has this sort of martial arts character. What comes to mind is the things that the 4th edition monk does. And the fact that the 5th edition monk doesn't do it is always dismissed as either like, oh, I'm not optimizing or I haven't gotten to that point yet. I haven't earned the, the right to have fun yet with the real good stuff. That kind of idea. And it makes me sad that, that people are, are frankly getting bamboozled by Wizards of the Coast thinking that the, uh, the, the 5e monk is worth a damn to be honest like like that's what it really comes down to uh i think the fifth edition monk is just hot garbage and i don't know why anyone would put up with it but oh well um we are uh we're having like we're we're one session into this campaign i'm already having an absolute blast uh, uh this party is so much has so much good stuff in it um just, just, like, even before we get into, like, character dynamics and relationships and storyline and plot, all that even aside, just mechanically, these characters have so many interesting parts to them that I look forward to seeing how the players uh, utilize them and leverage them. Uh, and, frankly, uh, uh, how they use them to feel awesome. Because that's sort of the the core goal of fourth edition as a as a game is here, come feel awesome for a few hours, and it accomplishes that goal quite well. And I I can think of no higher praise for uh, for an RPG, um, no higher praise. There, there's other equally high praise for RPGs, uh, but uh, uh, no higher praise than. This game successfully makes you feel awesome con con consistently and continuously. Uh, and I think there is maybe no better example of that than the monk. Uh, 